household in Fulham, right? There, there's no families in uh, Silicon Valley who have, who have babies with mobiles and tablets at the table. It, that, that doesn't happen. I mean, you know, uh, the, the head of Apple was Steve Jobs, uh, or no, it's the other one. Yeah, uh, yeah Steve yeah. Jobs here was very clear that he would never, he never gave an iPad to his kids, right? But now that is surely the only, um, the only product that we buy that the seller would not give to their own family. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you go to an Apple store and your kid grabs the apple and he takes a bite and then the owner's kid grabs the apple and he says, don't touch, don't eat that. Are you going to eat the rest of the thing? You're going to say, don't buy from here. So why are we doing it? I think, uh, you know, it's horrible what that new technology is able to do. And it's brilliant as well for us to communicate. But, uh, you know. Is there a way that, um, sorry, I've got a question coming in. One of the things that I was also very struck about, in addition to this, I think it's about, again, not so much the Muslim nor Muslim divide, but the cultures that we live in, and there's a sort of silent character in this that we're introducing about alcohol, the culture around alcohol, and then also sexualization of women in particular. Yeah. I'm curious to see how you kind of, uh, well, as a mother, but also now, if you like, on the other side of, some of those experiences, which a lot you know, of us have been through, how do you negotiate that and what is the kind of message? It was really important as well, when, when writing this in hindsight, luckily again I had my diaries, not to say, not to be preachy on my old self, to actually present that person as she was. I wasn't, didn't spend every day unhappy going, where is my spirituality? I was having the time of my life at that time, because it was what I knew, going to bars, flirting, you know, feeling like a superstar, you know, that kind of power feeling, you know, getting all that male attention. You know, I would have said at the time, it's great, but I also cried myself to sleep and I also didn't understand what life was about. And I also threw up uh, every week, uh, you know, after drinking too much. And I also got myself into positions where, seriously, I remember at four o'clock in the morning, uh, you know, on the, st on the street looking for a taxi and the, the man who'd taken me out of the club who was with the Royal Shakespeare Company, he looked at me and he said, why are you doing this? You're a nice person. Because he knew I wasn't going to take him home or anything, like nothing was going to happen. He's like, literally, why are you doing, why are you here? Why aren't you? And I thought, why? Mm -hmm. And you know what the answer is? Why not? Why not? Why shouldn't I do this? So just because you can doesn't mean you should. Should kind of be a, a new motto. And so I didn't want to preach at my old self, I wanted to present her as she was, uh, but also saying, this is better. I haven't lost anything by coming to Islam. I've only got rid of what was poisoning me. Mm -hmm. I love that all your chapters are sort of praising Dua, either an eye of Quran, a hadith, mm -hmm. I think a bit of poetry in some places as well. Um, how did you go about choosing those? Was it just sort of spontaneous or did you have to sit down and think really hard? Bits. Nice question. So yeah, each of the chapters um, opens with um, quotes that were yeah pivotal to my part of life. So this one, number one, uh, is about my childhood, and this is the quote. Then he gave me his autograph picture of these three rusty nails. These three rusty nails. What do you think that might be about? That's by Roger McGuff. Roger McGuff was one of the beat poets from Liverpool. And uh, my dad knew him, and he, we used to have this, you know, wonderful old scratched record of poetry. And this one was about Jesus, as if Jesus was um, a beggar on the streets. What would happen if somebody opened the door and said, oh, there's this dirty man, and he looks dead like he's from the Middle East. And he's asked for a, a cup of water, so I gave him vinegar, and you know, gave me these th three rusty nails, and it just, so I, I chose them because they meant something to the person at that time. I also quote Spiritualized, who was a pop band, who I remember sitting in the Albert Hall, and they opened this amazing album with the lines, ladies and gentlemen, we are floating in space. And I thought, breathe. <laughs> 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 we're gonna talk about 